think I got to get kind right of chilly, here. so. Chilly? Are you? Uh, I'm, I mean, no, it's just like the rock is cold. Oh, the, okay. <laughs> yeah. I was about to say, what are you? Do you have like really thin <laughs> jeans on? Because I was like, I mean, like kind of... girl jeans are thinner than boy jeans. This is true. So. But those have pockets. I mean, girl pockets are not the same as boy pockets. Okay, let's test this. Mm -hmm. I, okay, so here's mm -hmm. here's my whole pocket, right there. Okay, okay. You're, you're gonna you're gonna enjoy this. That's it. That's that's all the pocket you get. That's it. That's a girl pocket. That is a girl pocket. Well, welcome to a girl pocket. So, I mean, I knew about girl pockets kind of like intellectually, <laughs> but I didn't really. Nope. Yeah. No, girl pockets are tiny, and okay. see, I have all these cough drops in there. <laughs> wow. Okay. See, Do look. That's it. That's it. You have a cough drop pocket. Basically. I have a cough. I have a cough drop pocket or lip gloss. Ew. <laughs> yeah. Ah, well, okay. just, uh, for the for the fashion forward among you, you get like a, a uh -huh. square centimeter pocket for your that is, that is cr I can't even put my hand in my pocket. How do you not know this? Hi, uh, I'm Thomas. And I'm Whitney. Hey. And we are here in... Uh, Sunny, shockingly enough, Glasgow uh, for the Worldcon. Yeah! And, uh, yes, woo. So tell me how you've been enjoying it so far, what all you've been doing. Oh what man. I've been seeing. Well, I, I was only here for the weekend, as you mm, know, unfortunately. Right. I decided to sightsee instead. Mm. But I had the most amazing day yesterday. I think I met every good. author that I have yeah. ever heard of. Okay. All the big ones anyway. Yeah. Um, and I posted them all on my Instagram. So mm -hmm. if you so want to see proof. So it's Alistair Reynolds, right? Yep. So Alistair Reynolds, mm -hmm. who talked our ear off, he was fantastic. Nicest guy alive. He really. was so great. Just so nice. Yeah. Um and also Adrian Jakovsky, mm -hmm. which was exciting you met me. him i didn't meet him but okay, okay. But, but well yeah. um and then we uh we met the intimidating three uh -huh. which uh thomas sort of pushed me into them <laughs> yeah i did i can't uh, i just but uh she is such a fan girl you guys it's so cute oh my god she's so shy i couldn't like, talk to them they were so intimidating no they're just like three three dudes i mean what's well, it's, it's it, you're it's really nice actually how approachable everyone is but it was scalzi yes. and scalzi uh -huh. gareth powell and peter f hamilton peter f. hamilton they yeah. were all standing around in a circle and mm -hmm. Thomas pushed me into them. I did. He did. Well, I'm not violently, you know, just sort of like I mean, like it was pretty kind of, violent. It was more of a nudge. I like squash poor John Scalzi. I no, mean, no, <laughs> it wasn't like, yeah. I mean, it was kind of like a, a, an assertive nudge, but it, was, it wasn't like a shove. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. like, you know, like a horrible football yeah. tackle thing. Yeah. It was, yeah, yeah just yeah. just so I want everyone to be clear on that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But, and um, we also saw um, Elizabeth Bear and uh -huh. um, her husband. And Scott Lynch. Scott Lynch, which I didn't know they were married. I thought that so, was just co yeah. common knowledge. I'm sorry. No. See, I feel like it's. I had a personal duty to like inform you of that, and I failed. Yeah. I failed. Well, you know, I was like selfieing with, with Elizabeth Bear, and, uh -huh. and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Can you can, can your husband take a picture? And he's like, what about me? And I was like, oh, I guess I'll take a picture with you at a pity. <laughs> and then and then it's just Scott Lynch, and I was like, what? Oh, that, that, I don't no, know. That, that's exactly how to respond know. to Scott. That's yeah. yeah that's, that was <laughs> yeah. that was entirely correct on your part. You know, but, <laughs> He's so funny. He's so yeah, funny. Yeah, but they're uh, yeah, it's mm -hmm. a great, great bunch of folks. Mm -hmm. um, some some not maybe one not so nice, but we won't have to talk about him. Yeah. yeah, but that's I think that's just kind of his general attitude, you know. Um, yeah. But uh, see, but, now you're, you're going to be watching this entire video trying to guess. Yeah. And I love doing that to people. Oh. They're going to be like, God, now why did you do that, Thomas? Well, you, you could just go over to my Instagram and look and see what's the one person that we didn't talk about. Ah, ah a clue, an Easter a egg. Clue. Yes. Yes. So why are we here? So we have decided, we mm -hmm. have been talking about collaborating forever. Yes. And we want to go ahead and... Uh, give each other books to read. Yeah. Because as we're walking by all the vendors, everybody mm -hmm. has all these great books. And every time I walk by and talk about a book, Thomas is like, well, I haven't read that. Mm. I haven't read that. There, yeah, I'm <laughs> behind on a lot and I'm embarrassed and it's my my daily shame, I know, but. No, yeah. no. Well, and he had a bunch of recommendations for me. So we mm -hmm. just decided, why not do this live on camera? Hijack each other's TBRs, basically. Yeah. 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 So uh, I have um, three books mm -hmm. that I think Whitney would like and whether she does or not, uh, we'll find we're out. basically assigning mm -hmm. each other, and it's only three because we don't want to overextend ourselves. Mm -hmm. Three books to read: mm -hmm. science fiction, some mm -hmm. old, some new, and uh, the the whole idea is that you know by a month from today, because tonight's the Hugo ceremony, which mm -hmm. we will be at, um, we need to have them finished, and then mm -hmm. we will just have a little live stream, tete-a-tete, chit-chat, uh, where we 
just talk about the books together. And yeah. that's even more collaborating. See, it all kind of ties in. I know, right? Yeah, it's, it's a master plan, but uh, yeah. only, we, only we were able to figure that out. No one else has ever done that. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. that's super new. It's a new to YouTube <laughs> thing that no one's ever done. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so anyway, mm -hmm. um, so how do you want to do this? Uh, uh, who, let's just, just, let's just alternate. Do Why don't you go first? Want it's your first? channel, you, you should, go first. Uh, well, I mean, that's not doesn't necessarily give me a... See, I feel like you're like, okay. Mm -hmm. Instead of arguing about it, okay. Just, okay. Okay. Ready? Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh. <laughs> well, say so rock. I, I, no, you. That's oh, rock. Fine, you. Yeah. Fine, you fine, go I win. first. I win. You, okay. you want it? Yes. All right. So. Okay. Hit me. So the first book that I'm gonna have you read is a new one that I have okay. been begging you to oh. read forever. Well, that so could now be now you're forced to read this book. Okay. Well, it um, could be a lot of things. So I'm not sure. Yeah. I I, I know. I I actually mm. force you to read all of the books that I read that are good. Mm. But yeah. okay. So this book is called Generation Ship by Michael Mame. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have mm -hmm. been wanting to read that yes, for I some know. time. I know. I I, I don't know how bad you've been wanting to read it. Well, I mean, I've been like. Like, read this book, read this book, read this book. I, I know, no, yeah. Anyway, it's, it, it is mm -hmm. what it is. But yes, mm -hmm. so now I finally have no excuse. Mm -hmm. I can't put it off. Um, so tell me why you think that I would like, I mean, I know that you know that I like, you know, deep space stories and space mm -hmm. operas and generation ship stuff, but what is it about this particular book that you think is, well, so push my buttons? There are two things that are really great about this book. The first one is that it's a standalone. So you don't have any follow-ups and a lot of people really like that. So we're not gonna crowd your TBR with a whole bunch of things. It's a okay. standalone. All right. Okay. Next is that um, it does something a little bit different than other generation ship books do. Um, instead of focusing on when they're in the middle of the adventure or uh, at the beginning of their adventure, trying to get everything together, um, or even at the very end when they finally land on the planet, which it does have a little bit of that in there. This one really focuses on the anticipation right before they get to their destination. Oh. So about like six months to six weeks out when they can see the planet, but okay. they don't know yet if it's totally habitable. Okay. And all of the political revolutions that happen on the ship, all of the people who have been used to being claustrophobically enclosed are now starting to panic because ah. the, the, the sky is coming. <laughs> and... Um, and, and there's just like a lot of really cool multiple point of view perspectives in this book that I think were just really well done and it even has kind of a controversial ending so you may not like the ending but we'll find out okay. so all right uh, oh, I think that's, but that's it. fine though okay mm -hmm. um, excellent choice mm -hmm. I all right generation ship my first one I'm on it I'm on it so what do you got for me okay um, first up I'm gonna start with one that is a little bit older but it is by an author that I know that you have read and okay. that you like. Okay. And so I chose this one because I thought, you know, it might be interesting to see what you think of an earlier work okay. by this writer, how he's kind of at a formative stage of his career, kind of mm -hmm. coming up with the ideas that he would become known for mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. And so this book is, and it's easy to get, because, even though it's old, because it has just been re-released oh. as part of the Tor Essentials line. Oh, and you know how I love these yes. and Tor Essentials. Yeah. And beautiful mm -hmm. books and great, to, you know, mm -hmm. fantastic imprint to be bringing back old stuff. So this mm -hmm. is Ice Hinge by Kim Stanley Robinson. Oh. And I think this was maybe like his second or third book. One okay. of those. Okay. Uh, but it's short. You okay. Know, you know, compared to some others. And it's essentially, I think, you know, there, it's mysterious alien artifact on Pluto, like giant. Oh. Hinges, like giant standing stones, except okay. their eyes. So, hmm, mystery, where'd they come from? That kind of a thing. So, um, hmm. so I th okay. I think you'd enjoy it. I think it would be, All right. yeah. All right, you know, well, so I, I don't actually own that book, yes, so I, I am going to have to get it. Yeah, but not um, hard. It's, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Just new new and just out okay. in a okay. re-release. So. Well, I am kind of intrigued. I have been meaning to read his book, uh, The Year of uh, Rice and Salt, so yeah. I'll have to add that one to my okay. new TBR. Well, the Year of Rice and Salt is yeah, just a massive historical kind of yeah. alternate history tome. Very much worth reading. But yeah, this is far less intimidating than that. Okay. So, okay. okay. All right. So what do you got for me? Number two. All right. <sighs> so number two, I decided to go a little bit more older and vintage, even though I know you've read way more than me. 
I I really decided to pick a book that I recommend to all my friends. By the way, okay. I have recommended to many other channels. Okay. Okay. So um, we'll see how you feel about it. Yes. But this book is uh, James Hogan's Inherit the Stars. Inherit the Stars. Okay. Now this is a beginning of a trilogy. I, um. Yeah. Right. Have I, you read it? Okay. I was twelve. Oh. Uh, but no. But I, no. I was a little boy. Okay. So it doesn't count really because I was twelve. And so it would have been like decades ago, I'm aging myself here, but you know, when you're 12, you read and it's fun, but you don't like have the critical filters installed in your brain yet. You, you don't really think about books the same okay. way. So okay. it will effectively be a 100% new reading experience for me okay yeah. okay yeah no, well I, are you sure because i have an alternative uh, no i think i'm good okay i think i'm good okay. with that i mean okay. obviously i'm intrigued by the alternative but no i think i'll go ahead go with the first choice okay now back in the, i think the early part of his career you know mm -hmm. james hogan was like really a go-to guy for hard science fiction mm -hmm. i think yeah. later in his career he kind of got a little weird went off the rails a little bit but um but the early stuff um mm -hmm. yeah is is very highly thought of mm -hmm. i think i've only read one other book of his from this general period it's called um, uh, The Two Faces of Tomorrow, oh. which I did like. Mm -hmm. I if I read it again, I might like it a little less well because it, some of the, I'd be like, okay, that idea is not as original as I used to think it was, but I would still enjoy it, I'm sure. Okay. So I'm looking forward now to seeing well, what I think of this as a, a not no longer little boy. Right, right. So. right. Well, <laughs> I, I will tell you that uh, mm -hmm. despite the fact that it's a trilogy, okay. it's available in both the Omnibus Edition and mm -hmm. separately. Right. Um, and I would recommend it getting it separately because the first and the second books were utterly fantastic. I mean, everything mm -hmm. that I love about vintage science fiction, I'll tell you about that in a minute. Yeah. But the last book was kind of a big decrease in quality. Okay. So the last book was kind of not so great, but the first two, mm -hmm. really, like, really good. Nail it. Okay. Um, yeah. So you, can, so, times, yeah. so you can go on if you want to, but you don't have to because this book does a great job standing alone. Okay. So you'll be okay. Right on. And um, I think the um, the cover photo does a really good job of kind of explaining <laughs> to you what yeah. it does. I yeah. think it's one of the most intriguing covers. It really is. Yeah, because uh, they, they find this like dead guy on the moon, right? Right. So you, see, you do remember it. Well, no, I remember the cover. Okay. And it had them okay. digging up a dead guy on the moon. Yeah, so yeah. That, so that's, that's kind of easy to figure yeah, out. Yeah. Right? So yeah. So it's kind of an alternative <laughs> history, but not really. It's they uh, land on the moon and they find this dead body of an astronaut on the moon, uh -huh. and everybody is very confused because by this point, uh, you know, we can count on our hands the number of people that have gone to space. Yeah. And so we're no not one, missing anyone. Right. So who is this? And they end up doing some archaeological dating, which he talks a lot about doing, uh -huh. and they find out that this body is fifty thousand years old and mm. the suit is a little bit more technologically advanced than the ones we have now okay which is even more interesting okay so they end up using a lot of archaeologic techniques um, and exploration of the suit of little tiny things like the fabric it's made of and things like that to try mm. to date and figure out who this person was how they died and how exactly they got on the moon and it leads to bigger and bigger pictures okay. of really our place in the universe it was fantastic very okay. imaginative you kind of have to suspend your disbelief a little bit but sure. it is yeah. so awesome i loved it so okay much. so you've got me like super excited now yeah so, yeah. yeah yeah and it's not super long so you'll love that yeah because yeah. that was a lovely thing about you know science fiction books back then they yeah. were like just like a couple hundred pages and you're in and out so yeah, yeah, yeah. perfect okay so um yeah the, um inherit the stars i'm on it so mm -hmm. exciting okay so now um book two for you okay this is uh, another older book. Okay. Um, it is considered, I guess, kind of a, mi uh, um, well, I shouldn't say minor, because it's maybe not so well known today, but you know, like you kind of have to get into the weeds of like, if you get on Reddit, like r slash printsf, hmm. and some of like the real deep dive nerds on there, they will hmm. know about these books. Um, but this is the first book, it, it was the first in a trilogy, but again, can be read on its own. And uh, the title <laughs> is When Gravity Fails. Now the author is a guy named George Alec Effinger. He's he's. I've you know, not heard of this. Pass, one. Yeah, he's mm -hmm. passed away. Um, when I was again a little, you know, baby Thomas and going to my first like conventions way back when, I, mm -hmm. a couple of cons in Texas, I you know met him and, mm. and, and very nice, very sweet fellow. And um, one interesting piece of trivia about George was that he was a huge fan of daytime soap operas. So like, like a big, like like a big enough to where like he would he, he wrote about them. So he was like no, almost an wow. like some kind of an expert. So he was like <laughs> that was that was his total geek thing. But oh, wow. but he wrote a lot of terrific science yeah. fiction, 
his heyday was like the 70s and 80s. Mm. And then he passed away prematurely, unfortunately. Mm. But um, this trilogy, and especially this book, the first book in the trilogy, is still very well thought of, you know, by, by you know, people who are still aware of it. And, you know, it was reprinted, I think, in, back in the 2000s from uh, Orb, which was an imprint that Tor had for a little while doing, you know, bringing back older stuff. But um, it, it's still around and about. And you can get it. So okay. I know that you are still kind of hot and cold on cyberpunk. You're not, like, fully committed yeah. so to I, the genre. I really so I really didn't enjoy... Neuromancer. Yeah, I hate it fan. with this undying passion. Yeah. <laughs> which I know you always tell me I need to, to read Count Zero. I, I think Count Zero is the better book. You know. If, I will someday try it. Yeah. Uh, when I want to torture myself again. It's okay. I mean, you know, it's, it's not going to be for everyone and that's fine. You know, and it's, it's very possible to recognize mm -hmm. that like a, a book's important in the history of a particular movement maybe not for me but it you know has that so but yeah, it's just not okay. enjoyable yes, yeah I just just not your thing mm -hmm. it's okay mm -hmm. well i wanted to try to find something that you know you might find but and even if you don't care for it i think you'll still find this book unique and unusual in enough ways that you okay. know that it'll pique your interest well i have never heard of this <laughs> author or this book yeah and i'm really interested in um finding a cyberpunk book that i would like so yeah. that's great um and uh the hardest part about this is going to be um i might have to borrow your copy because i that's don't know if i can find it perfectly fine yeah yeah, yeah not not hard mm -hmm. but uh yeah i wanted to go off a little bit a bit off the beaten path with this one it has this kind of middle mm -hmm. eastern setting it's really intriguing but mm -hmm. um all right so there it okay. is okay yeah. all right okay now all right so Hit me. your third and final book mm. i decided to do something a little different shouldn't peek. Yeah. um i'm not gonna peek yeah don't peek, I'm not gonna peek. i um so this is a translated work, but don't worry, oh, it's short. Okay. Okay. That's no, no, fine. Yeah. Um, and it's a book that I recently finished on the the airplane up here, actually. Really? And I gave it five stars. You did. So. Oh, okay. I, I really hope that's, you enjoy it. That's, that's big I really hype hope now. you enjoy it. That's big hype. So this fine. book is All You Need Is Kill, which oh. is the book that inspired Edge of Tomorrow, Edge of the, Tomorrow movie. the movie. Yes, the, yes. The, the Tom Cruise movie, which is a fantastic movie, by oh, the way. Oh, man. 10 but out of 10. It was so good. Very underrated movie, I think. It didn't do great at the box office. Yeah. Because I think Tom Cruise was kind of in his weird phase at that well, moment. Well, and, they, yeah. and they, they messed up the name, the title. Of yeah. The, you know, the title was like... I think it was like live, die, repeat, or day after tomorrow, or yeah. what? Some, a whole bunch of other things. Yeah. And well, the title, I think, in the release version of the movie, mm -hmm. they started. It was going to be, I think, something like the day after tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You said, and but then it they settled on edge of tomorrow. That was the mm -hmm. title, mm -hmm. which is like so generic. It could literally be anything. It could be like you know any any movie about any subject. It could be yeah. a family drama, right? I yeah. mean, it doesn't tell you anything. But the tagline for the movie was live, die, repeat. Mm -hmm. And I think, they, cool I think they realized too late that maybe that was our title. Yeah. You know, yeah. because because that describes what happens in the film, right? I mean, yeah. Cruz plays this fellow who is, like, constantly being brought back. It's kind of like it, it's a very violent version yeah. of a futuristic military SF like Groundhog re Day. It's replay yeah. or ca Groundhog Day, yeah. something like that. But Yeah, and he's, he's yeah. just brought back. Uh, so, but the movie is, like, fantastic. So even well, if you don't like Tom Cruise, I'm going to tell you, watch, if you just say, I hate the movie, I yeah. hate Tom Cruise... Even if you hate Tom Cruise, it's a good movie to watch because he gets killed like 40 times in the first hour. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so there you go. Yeah. yeah. But, well, but I'm intrigued by the book because well, I'm sure it's going to be different. It's, it, it's, a, it's a very different. It has a very different ending. Okay. So um, I will also tell you it made me cry. Oh, yeah. So, oh, oh. so I will, I will tell you that they, they did a really good job. I thought despite it being translated, it's not like three body problem. Mm -hmm. It has a very deep, very emotionally rich main character. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's and, not the super techie, like hard SF stuff. Right. So, yeah. Right. Well, and, and it's, um, there's some of that in there, but this is really about this one particular guy and how he handles this war mm -hmm. with these alien creatures called mimics and, um, what happens to make him have to repeat this day over and over and what he's supposed to learn and all of the things that happen in this book. Um, I was really hesitant to read it because I already know the story and mm -hmm. I don't do that very often. Um, but this one really caught me by surprise and it was 
fantastic. Mm -hmm. So I really hope you enjoy it as uh, much as I, I do. I'm looking forward to it, actually. I'm really excited. I mean, excited. I've known of this book uh -huh. for years. I, it's even possible that, like, when, when like, I think Viz Publishing, I think it was, mm -hmm. put it out in the States maybe, like, 10, 12 years ago. I may have been sent one, but I can't recall if I did. Uh, if you need mine, I'll, yeah, it's, I'll lend it. it's in a box mm -hmm. somewhere, so I know mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. I can get it from you if I need to. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm actually really excited about that because that, that was a complete surprise. That's the biggest surprise of, of all of them that you've given oh, me. Oh, really? I okay. would not have anticipated that or predicted that in a hundred okay. years. So that's okay. that's cool. Well, okay. it's nice and short, and I yeah. think you'll love it. All so. right. Well, I'm mm -hmm. ready to. I'm ready to do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So last one. Mm -hmm. Last one I have for mm -hmm. Whitney. Okay. I wanted to give you. You gave me your the new book mm -hmm. at the first of your list. I'm going right. to give you the new book at the bottom of my list. Okay. So this is and this is a brand new book because I know this is an author we've all read. Okay. Right. And so um, and I know you're probably anticipating it. But okay. This is going to be Polo Stand by Neil Stevenson. <gasps> is that out book? already? It is not out. It is out uh, September oh. 10th. But you've got a copy. I do. Yeah. Just don't. Oh. Oh. Don't, don't tell anyone. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So that's a thing, you know. <laughs> You're my very best friend. Oh my uh, gosh. Yes. Um, I have been so eagerly anticipating that, and I had too. forgotten that one was coming out this year. Yeah, but yeah, but what's interesting is, or, uh, you, you, I'm sure you don't remember, but on my anticipated science fiction of 2024 video, when I uh, brought it up, uh -huh. at the time I thought that this was going to be the long rumored sequel to Seven Eves. But, but that's how it was marketed, format. wasn't it? I, I guess so. It was either marketed that way or maybe that was just what the rumor mill was saying. Mm. But but it's not that at all. It is not that at all. It's, I think it's actually a more kind of a historical thing. Oh. Um, even I'm going to need some okay. time to anyway, read this one. No, you're not because unlike a lot of Neil Stevenson books, this one is like just 300 something pages. What? Yeah, I know. It just well, like, his editors just like woke up and cut it in half. Huh? Well, no, I think probably what happened is like Neil dropped a 15 gigabyte file <laughs> into his editor's inbox, and yeah. the editor just emailed him back and said, "We're doing this one as a trilogy. Neil, just deal with it." So probably oh. could be that. So it could be another one like a lot of Neil's books where it just doesn't have an ending; it just kind of quits. But <laughs> well, do, do they know? But, is it is there going to be another book to, vo to follow up? No, it is. It is a trilogy. Oh, so okay. now I don't know what the actual schedule of it is, but um, yeah, at least that's what the the publicity material Ooh, I got said. Oh, yeah. exciting! So, yes. Yeah, so.